Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. This is the Wix Online Meeting 153. We're in August, and today's going to be a bit more exciting than our typical meeting. We have some good Wix 4 status that isn't just status. All right, as always, these meetings are recorded for those of you that aren't with us right here, right now. Uh, we'll do triage, get that knocked out, put it out of the way. Um, then I want to walk through where Wix 4 status is, and then we'll do the usual questions and comments. All right, so without further ado, let's go. Um, triage, you ready, Rob? Bob? Who? Ready? Wow, that just did not roll off the tongue at all. Are you ready, no. Bob? <laughs> I am. I am ready, Rob. <laughs> that actually is kind of scary. Um, documentation on how to install a service is still on Bob, so I think we'll leave it there. Let's do that. Um, convert all documentation to a wiki. Um, I want to discuss this, but I didn't spend this last two weeks working on this problem. I spent it on the Wix four. Um, stuff, so I want to skip this um, discussion and we will have it in another two weeks, I expect. Um, Let's do it. Yeah, so candle should warn instead of error on duplicate preprocess variables. Uh, this actually came from a Fire Giant customer, if I remember correctly. Um, it did? And so I know a little bit of that. I was like, no, of course it should error duplicates. That's what C would do. And then Bob said, yeah. no, not no. quite. Not so much, yeah. In fact, uh, C++, um, both, well, CL, sorry, Visual C++, yes. um, CL.exe at the command line and, uh, you know, pound define in, in source code doesn't even error. Or, sorry, doesn't even warn. Hmm. So, um, at, at, you know, default warning levels, so. I, I I think it should probably be a, a I think it should always be a warning. Um, I, I waffled a bit because an alternative is that it, if the values are equal, which is probably the most common case, you know, you're getting um, preprocessor variables set from you know Wix projects and maybe an include file, and oops, you duplicated, you know, the the variable names, and they're getting the same values, like a build number, maybe that should just, you know, be automatically okay. Um, I think a warning is probably more appropriate, because you really don't want duplicates floating around. Yeah. It's, it's, it's a hygiene issue. I think it's worth a warning. Yeah, I, I I agree. Given our general approach to the world, um, I think a warning is fine. But um, that means you don't have to do undef unless you want to avoid the warning. Right, right. Okay. It's not my memory at all of C, but well, it <laughs> today at least. Yeah, today it is. All right. So yeah, and Jacob, it's the last one. Well, yeah, the last. It changes as you um, move through the code, so it'll be whatever the one you had up to that point until you evaluate the second one, and then the value changes and it keeps going, just like a variable. It's not declared at that point; it's very procedural, line by line kind of thing. Um, all right, uh, four zero. Uh, yeah. Uh, can you guys make I'll, the documentation better, please? Yeah, this is a lovely message base saying, "Hey, you guys should do better than you're doing." Um, I want to toss us in with the wiki conversation because it's basically all goes into the big documentation bucket. Um, yeah, this this error or this issue rather, um, of course, it's not actionable. It's not actually something you you know. Um, there's nothing to do here. I mean, I, I want to just say you know no. But that would be rude. Um, but you know, uh, sorry. well, no, no, look, look. You know, I'm I'm all in favor of better documentation. Obviously, um, my concern is that you know, just saying make it better isn't useful. It's just it's not useful. You know, um, it's it's worse than useless. I would say because you know, <laughs> obviously. The, the person making the report has some specific things, and I don't know. They hit three issues in a row, and they just go blah. They're, it's useless. It's worthless. Burn it all down. Like no, no. Look, 
give us concrete things. And hey, look, a smart person can look at several concrete things and find themes. So this idea of, of you know, burn it down and replace it all is, is yeah, no, it's bad. Um, if you want to keep this open for the discussion, okay. But otherwise, I think it should just go away. It's yeah, not useful. I haven't figured out how to respond to it, and honestly, I haven't spent the time, and it goes in my documentation, mental documentation bucket. So um, I'll look at making it go away by the next meeting. When we, when I, when we, by the time we're discussing the what is this wiki mean thing like that. Okay. Um, all right. So I guess you can give it to me so I don't forget. Um, MSI installer file created successfully, but the file has no owner and creating permissions. I'm like, how do you do that? <laughs> Well, they did it inside a Docker container. Access permission denied, right? I mean, yeah, so... We, we have this, we have the reset ACL thing. It's yes. It's the only thing that comes to mind. But that means that Docker is not propagating ACLs properly inside the container? I don't know. I mean... Well, yeah, I guess part of me is just like, well, if if they're we're doing this, there's a switch to suppress the reset ACL. Um, if Docker's you know foobar, then use the switch. All right, why don't we mention the switch to them? See if that fixes it. Um, that keep it open. And someone needs to investigate these Docker things, and it's not going to be me right now. Like, it's just, you know, it's, it's like, I mean, these people are playing inside Docker containers and just be fun, but I'm not there right now. So I, I don't know what to do with these things. Yeah. yeah, I guess we can open it in four. Like, here, you can try this, and we'll open it in four, and 4X, and hopefully someone will spend some time looking at Docker, right, at some point. Um, or maybe we will if we get enough people that actually, you know, start using it. Okay, I'm okay with that. Um, I it, I believe something's wrong. I don't know if it's ours to fix, but if it isn't, I don't know what people do with Docker. So we just have to decide how important that scenario is. And I'm not willing to write it off given the popular. There it is. I'm not willing to write it off given the ongoing popularity of it, and I believe it will be growing. Um, so we may need. I, it wouldn't surprise me if we need to do more here, but it's just not at that point right now, and I'm not going to be looking at it, so we need someone that does Docker to dig into this a little bit more than just, hey, it didn't work. It's like, great. So yeah. spend some time and figure out why it didn't work, because it works normally outside the container, and we'll go on that. So let's put it in four with the comment here. You could try this switch. If that works, let us know. If it doesn't, someone needs to debug into what's different about Docker, and it's not going to be us anytime soon. That's, I guess, where it comes down to. Okay. Yep. Oh, this makes me so sad. Yep. There are restriction policies for everything. Everything. Well, what use is an IT department if they can't make your life miserable? Well, we can just fall back, right? Yeah. I mean, if we can't do Windows temp, then fall back to the normal user temp location. Um, no, because that exposes the well, creative vulnerability that moved us to this temp in the first place. So um, where else do you go? Uh, program files folder. It tackled correctly. I think it's I think it's ACLED correctly. Well, we need to pick something that's ACLED correctly from the root. But but the, the policies can prevent anything. I mean I don't think they can prevent executables from running from program files folder. That would probably not be a good thing. <laughs> I guess I could. 
Well, yeah, they could block you. Writing or executing? Executing. Writing. Yeah. It's executing. We write the files fine. We just can't execute the execute once it's there. Hmm. I mean, I guess we could fall back to program files. It's really weird, but I guess that's what they're forcing us to do. <laughs> yep. Well, so at that point, should we give up on Windows Temp? Um, maybe. Um, the advantage of Windows Temp is that it's a temp folder, so it can get cleaned up like a temp folder. Yeah. Right. right. Um, and I'm fine if you know program files folder is. You know. Oh, the problem is that we won't know it until it fails to launch the executable. <laughs> Select that. Why can't I select that error code? Can someone read me that number, Bob? Eight zero zero seven zero four EC. Eight zero zero seven seven zero four EC. Zero four EC. EC. I don't know why I got three there. Oh, well, at least it's a <laughs> pretty clear error message, so we could catch that. Wait, so you want to catch it from Windows Temp and then redirect only if you get that particular message? Well, that's if we want to stay in Temp because we get the Temp deletion behavior. I'm ambivalent, honestly. All right. Um, would we take this fix in three? I don't really want to. Mm, yeah, I don't. I don't like the. <laughs> I don't like the sound of yeah. You know, even if we were to just treat it as another fallback, it, there's going to be. Yeah, I mean, you're, you're right. The problem is we won't know until we try to execute. Yeah, that, I mean, that just moves the code farther from each other. Well, and I'm concerned about, you know, okay, if we don't, the, the logging suggests that it is, you know, it wrote successfully, so that means we, if we then fail and want to try somewhere else, we have to clean up what we laid down. Um, I just, well, that, we do try to clean up, but. You know, we just kind of were like, well, if it's not perfect, it'll get deleted later. Or because it's right. <sighs> yeah. Yeah, actually, that wouldn't be. <sighs> well, looking at their screenshot, it looks like if we just always put a, a certain folder inside a temp, they could whitelist it. We can't put a certain. Oh, you mean a subfolder of. Yeah. Burn stuff goes here and then a random folder. Yeah. Well, then they're going to say that, you know, malware will do the same thing and then the malware is hiding and it defeats their whole purpose of this thing. Um, I, mean, I guess yeah, that's the only thing I'd be comfortable in putting in three, I guess. Oh, I see. Of moving. I see. So adding a folder in temp for this. Got it. Yeah, Jacob, all of this is about additional lockdown. Ignoring the fact that you're an admin, your, your godlike powers as admin are restricted. Again, because IT people really like to control the world. Um, I mean, it just means that malware shouldn't write to temp either. They should start writing program files folder like us, and then, hey... <laughs> I mean, because malware can write to this temp, then they can be an admin, so they could go write the program files folder instead, and everything's just on the door. So, I mean, it's it's paranoia, security theater a little bit, but but it probably blocks a class of malware that didn't think about being blocked like this, and so you beat them off for a little while. Yeah. 
yeah. Yeah, I mean, this is all, you know, obviously, Windows 10, you have to be, you know, elevated already. Um, so, yeah, it is just kind of like an extra wedge to try to prevent it. But dumb, because the only way you're going to get there is if you're already elevated, and then you can write somewhere else. Right. Yeah. 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 Write in System 32. There. Yeah. Maybe that's tracked. Write in, I mean, write in Program Files folder. Program Files folder, my malware app. Launch. Yeah. Well, I mean, they've already been doing... Oh, that's yeah. an option. Jacob's right. We could, like, remove these rules from the security policy. Are you sure? Maybe not. It's possible they come... <laughs> I don't know. Hmm. I'm not sure if you'd have to reboot to oh, apply that. I don't either. <laughs> We're not doing that. It was a joke. <laughs> <laughs> but... All right. Um, I guess it's something we look for in 4, 4.0. There's another answer. Don't launch your bundle elevated. And you don't have this problem either. True. Do people still turn off UAC these days? I don't know. Not these people. <laughs> <All right. laughs> Well, it's and there are there are legitimate use cases like you know running a bundle from a service. Yeah, that's you know a local system service. Yeah. I yeah I'm I'm inclined no we're just we'll do this in four like there are workarounds to this and well yeah the paranoia is a bit things and yeah we'll we can fix it in four we'll come up with a different way of doing it in four. Uh, not going to spend a lot more time in three working on this problem. Just not. <laughs> it's not. So, yeah, we'll move it to four. Okay. Wix.com is not Wix toolset. That is true. And I wish they didn't do that. Not exactly a bug, but you might want to have your legal team huh, huh, huh. take a look at them for using your trademark. That assumes that we have a trademark. So, um, and, and a legal team. After not defending it over, since Wix.com took over. We would have lost it anyway. Yeah. Um, uh, so, thank you. <laughs> As if we hadn't thought of this already. <laughs> anyway, I think we can... I, make I, I did notice it. I get all sorts of ads. Ads for Wix.com are following me all over the web. It's kind of scary. Yeah, I suppose. I gave up on it. They just messed up yeah. the world too much that I ended up falling back and doing ad blocker. And then I let certain things through. So, for reasonable people that have appropriate ads on their site. Still, I do enjoy when I get to like a, a an ad on YouTube, immediately clicking the skip ad button just to mm. express my displeasure. I don't think they care. All right. I think that's triage. Let's talk about Wix 4 status. So um, the micro repros are up and working. Not all of them, but a lot of them, enough to make very interesting progress across the world, um, namely data, extensibility, core, uh, core native. You can think of that as a winner op, so native code, cordon off. That's all the things that we don't do in managed code. Um, and then tools, which are the tools themselves. Um, there are then also dutil, DTF, WCutil is the um, helper um, repos that provide functionality for everything else. Um, and then firewall extension, NetFX extension, util extension, Visual Studio extension are up and running as well in this system. So we have a lot of end-to-end -end things. I'll go through a list that isn't there. Um, in a minute on the next slide, but um, there are integration tests in each repo. They're not comprehensive by any mean. Um, I don't call them unit tests because they aren't like targeted features within the tooling. They are here, let's make sure the scenario that this repo covers 
can be done in all the different ones. Um, so, for example, in the tools where the MS Build tools are, there is a nice um, well, I've been working on getting it so that it can run MS Build with a Wix proj to verify that the MSIs and such get built to the correct folders and that clean works and things like that. Um, hint, clean does not work right now, but that's been a bug that's been open, so it's going to be really nice getting tests on all that stuff um, that we've never had in Wix before. We also then can go to the more narrow repos and create more narrow and narrow tests um, to ensure functionality gets caught at the lowest level versus having to catch it at the very top. So that's kind of nice as well. Um, there are lots more tests to be written, but I'll cover that um, in a minute as well. The big thing, I think all that above is known. The big thing that's new um, is that um, I've got things working well, very well, to um, embrace NuGet as a distribution point. This has been a request. If you go and look at our, I don't know, four or five or ten different uh, NuGet distributions for the Wix 3 tools. People want this. It's kind of the way that Visual Studio is pushing everything. So we're kind of going the opposite way. We're just going to embrace it all out. Um, right now, there is, in the tools, you can build the Wix toolset.ms build, um, and that gives you your uh, Wix proj integrations. You can have Wix proj. You can do your mechanism to install NuGet package to it, standard for any project, and boom, you'll have the tool set coming down from MS build. Also, because Wix is a .NET Core app, um, you can do, we came up with the interesting idea of doing a global tool, which ends up being a really nice way to distribute the command line version of the world. And because that's very, very new, I have enough to do a demo, so I wanted to kind of show you what that looks like. So hopefully you're seeing a command prompt, um, and hopefully it's big enough. I didn't think about making, maybe I can make the font a little bigger. I should have done this before. Oh my goodness. I don't go in here. Uh, is that big enough for you guys? Because I hope it is. I can read that. All right, good. We'll call it good for now. Um, all right. Okay. So what I have is a directory with some source code. It's not terribly interesting. It's a package with your typical product information, a package of components with a component group, um, a Wixel file to localize stuff, and the components refer to this one test.txt. So the in this new world, you'll be able to get Wix by saying, you know, this .NET tool install. I'm going to make it global because it makes it easier to use um, Wix. And then because I'm still in pre-release, you have to give it the uh, pre-release. But in the future, you can just you can skip the version unless you want a specific one, um, and it will get the latest release that we have up on NuGet. Of course, none of them are up there right now. These are all in our private builds. Um, but if, we, if you do that, .NET tool install, uh, did I get the version number? I did. Missed the zero here. You get backwards compatibility version numbers. All right. <clears throat> Goes out, installs, Wix does all that kind of good stuff. So now I can from the Wix command line. Um, we don't do candle light anymore. We've incorporated it into one big build command. So you can do um, packages, package components, loc, the packages in US. Output to bin package, I don't know, whatever. Uh, foo.msi, doesn't matter. Do a build, runs everything, and then when you look in in the bin folder, hey, look, we have our cab, our MSI, our Wix PDB, and a test file that we're using for test purposes, the word file that will eventually go away. Um, so there you go. Uh, build, all that kind of good stuff all from the command line, all through a NuGet distribution. Uh, this is very new, but it is working very well at this time. Um, so I'm very encouraged that this will be a, uh, a very nice way to ship the tools as people adopt uh, NuGet more and more and more and more. So let's go talk about what's not working. Um, remaining work, uh, burn, um, producing and consuming merge modules, uh, decompiling, Transforms patching, which kind of go together, um, finishing the remaining extensions, and then there are going to be all the bugs, bugs, bugs from everything else. So that list, list looks really long. Um, looks like, uh, how's that ever going to all work? The thing is that mostly it's about uh, getting the code that we've had in the past into the appropriate place in the new in the in the new world. And so a lot of that isn't. It's very straightforward. Like I don't expect burn um, to take too long 
to bring it over to the micro repro and get it all set up. So I'm actually excited about doing that. Right now, we've adopted Microsoft.com and targets for the Wix projects, for Wix targets, and that's just been where I've been focusing a lot of my work as I found and Sean has found many bugs over time that I just have to sort those all out before trying to move on. Um, so I expect a lot of this stuff to roll forward and um, fairly straightforward, uh, fairly quickly, uh, patching being the outlier because patching is always hard, um, but like doing an extension is easy. Um, this is also a place uh, where I think people can start jumping in and helping in certain areas. Um, particularly, there's a lot of opportunity to go into the, the testing in any of these repos and write or start writing more tests and covering things. I know it's not the sexy part, but you don't have to understand the deep interworkings of the WIS tool set. You can operate at a high level, and it can add a lot of value if you can get some really nice test covering scenarios, particularly ones that are more complicated, things that you've seen that we've you know, not maintained or broken every once in a while in the past. Um, I will send some other things to Wix devs. There's a tool that could be written that would help, given the micro repos. Um, help us update things, so I'll have that too. So just, there's, finally, I know I've been warning people off of Wix 4 uh, for being able to kind of get involved. There's now a few more things that you can start getting involved. So if you're interested, let's go discuss on Wix devs um, and Wix 4 will start coming together. It's, as you can see, it's already building on the size, does Wix lips, does those things really well. Um, I'm actually very encouraged how far along we are um, in it at this point, especially given the, the world of micro repos. Also, the micro-repo experiment has turned out to be a fantastic experiment. We've had a number of things where I'm like, oh my gosh, this thing is so cool. I'm really glad we do this. And every once in a while, something <laughs> that I've hit like, oh, this micro-repo makes life a lot harder in this way. Um, so it still turned out to be a, a good experiment. It is entirely possible that we will um, be able to, um, that we will be, yeah, I see your haircut, Heidi. <laughs> <laughs> Heidi just showed up. Anyway, um, that we will move back to a mono repo if for some reason the micro repo ends up being horrible. But as an experiment, we've learned a lot from it. So there we go. Um, so anything else people want to talk about? Questions, comments, things going on? That was quiet. Nothing. Nobody. <laughs> so, uh, when do you plan on doing the burn stuff, or um, how does that fit in the roadmap? Burn is the next big thing that I want. Well, I'm, I'm flipping. I have to flip a coin between burn and merge modules. Um, I haven't decided which one I want to do most. A lot of me is like, I want to get merge modules done and out of the way because they had some weirdnesses to the code. Um, but, but who in the right mind would want to work on merge modules? Well, yeah. Um, and again. so, I, <laughs> again, yeah. So, so I'm I'm a little bit inclined to do um, merge modules just to kind of finish the that that scenario in the MSI world um, to have that mostly covered, and then do burn. I, the merge modules mostly, again, those things are very mechanical, so they don't take me as long. The one that's harder that I've just been, you know banging my head against for the last few days is the Wix targets using MS common targets is just a lot more work. You have to absorb common targets and then use it appropriately in a custom system and we're not C sharp. So it's a little it takes a little bit more work. Um, so I don't have a direct answer. I'm um, if if it made a difference for you, I could do get burn switched and then do merge modules if you wanted to get in there um, sooner than later, I guess I'd say. I guess I'm just remembering that we have at least one pull request that's still in burn. Yeah. So I was so wondering. We, I will. All those will be closed before any code moves over. Okay. I, I keep track of you know whatever pull requests and where they go to see do they need to be ported to the new world. And then I guess have we like finalized what all is going in the burn micro repo? Because I think we were doing like the 
ball util or the ball extension? Um, I've not finalized completely what will go in there. Um, and but it's not going to be a huge problem, I guess I'd say, because um, I've now I've moved things between repos, I've reorganized repos, added repos, things like that. I will eventually go back and update documentation to say here are they all are. Um, also need to go into the home repo and it says here's all the things and how you can find them, so you can go to the home repo and find a map of everything. So the answer to that question is not decided completely right now. My gut feeling tells me that. The burn will be in its own um, repo, and it will publish its header files um, downstream to other things, and that the ball extension will be in its own repo away from burn. Okay. What's the story on uh, NuGet packages with native code, like WCA util? Um, does Visual Studio have the plumbing to make that magically work, or okay, so native, so that so that kind of says, well, so so NuGet packages and repos aren't necessarily one to one, so we could have a burn repo, and then the ball extension, which includes the you know the actual extension, uh, Wix standard BA the managed BA stuff and volume. Correct. That could all be in one repo. Okay. And probably will because they all ship at the same time. Right. Right. But we want to publish many of, well, not many necessarily, but at least several NuGet packages out of that so that, for example, you could write a native BA, um, and you want ball util, and you, you want to write a managed BA, so you want the you know, MBA stuff out of uh, ball extension. Correct. And it is possible that the MBA um, interface assembly could maybe move to burn the way that the uh, C, the, the header files for writing mm -hmm. an extension live in burn. Okay. Maybe, maybe not. I don't know. I haven't. You know, that's kind of one of those. Yeah, where's the right place for this to live? Right. But yes, there's not a one-to-one. -one. The what I've what it's got down to the micro repos. What I've got it down to is you're kind of thinking of if this set of things inside this change, it would be ideal if they all change together and get published together. So that one change in here means that it makes sense to republish the whole thing. Um, so. You know, instead of putting, which is why you don't put like the firewall extension and the util extension into one repo, because that would mean a change to firewall would mean util would get republished and util pub and the firewall would get republished. You know, trying to avoid those kinds of things. So, but at the same time, we try not to go like, hey, let's go create a single repo for every single file. <laughs> we don't go that small either. So it's kind of a balancing game um, between what's the, the appropriate distribution for all that. So uh, there are repos that will have public you know, distributions out of them, and those are the ones that have to think about, you know, closely. If a change happens here, what, you know, what are the visible changes that people will see, so on and so forth. So anyway, but it's it's come together. It's it's working really well. The problems, and that most of the problems at this point are just you know, code and Wix forisms and all that kind of good stuff. So, yeah, it's. Looking forward to it. It's it's rolling well. Um, Bob's not big on it. I, I showed him the the global tool for .NET, but it's actually kind of a cool little way of just getting Wix real quick, banging on it, and then you know going on your merry way. The downside is that you have to have kind of embraced .NET Core. Um, uh, that's my only my only complaint is you know yes. you have to have .NET Core installed on your machine, which um, you yeah, know it's new. A lot of people won't have it. So we uh, we still need to support people who just use the framework. So. Yep. Agreed. All right. Anything else people want to talk about? Going, going. All right. Cool. Um, like I said, hopefully a meeting that's a little bit more interesting. It's not all every day that we do a demo of code. In fact, it's been a very, 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 very long time. 
but I'm pretty excited about where that's going. So two weeks, we'll come back, uh, talk about more <laughs> issues and things like that, and hopefully more fixes in Wix 4 between then. Now, I don't think I have a demo, but uh, just more progress to say mention as we move our way through triage and things like that. So two weeks from now, see you all later. Bye. Bye. Bye.